Thank you. And if we could uh, please uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Farr, if you would, the roll. Philip Klein. Here. David Bergstresser. Here. Paul Cornell. Here. Michael Astapan. Here. Thomas Stover. Here. Albert Hayes. Here. Michael Clark. Here. Robert Leslie. Here. Robert Fultan. Here. Carol Wright. Here. Richard Ferrara. Here. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to adopt or revise the meeting agenda? Make a motion to adopt. Motion made. Second. Second. Questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And um, we are in Stillwater and there are really no guests. We have a couple of individuals in the audience. Um, is there a motion for executive session? Uh, I would make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any questions? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Um, we may do Who business. Who was the first on that, Mr. Chairman? I didn't get a first. I made a motion. Actually, you can make the motion. Oh, I can't? Well, actually, yes. On that motion, okay. I think you can. Okay. Okay. Anyway, we'll and we will, we may come out of executive session and do business. So I just want to make that part of that motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, public comment period. I don't believe we have any speakers that have signed up, but if there's anyone that wishes to say anything, now would be a good time. Okay. If not, we'll proceed with the meeting. <coughs> Thank you. Um, if we could have a motion for the approval of the September 14th regular board meeting minutes. All right. Motion. Paul. I'll second. Second by Mr. Stover. Any questions? Additions, deletions. No. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 One, oh. one abstention, oh, please. One abstention. Mr. Astapan is at abstention as he is not here. Okay. Uh, report of the executive director. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the month of September saw it, um, uh, multiple meetings with. Uh, Local uh, uh, Great Sacandaga Lake uh, public interest groups, uh, including uh, the Sacandaga Protection Committee, uh, the Great Sacandaga Lake Advisory Council, um, and uh, individuals uh, that are involved in those uh, <coughs> two organizations. Um, also, during that period of time, uh, Following last month's uh, board meeting, uh, assessments for the current uh, fiscal year were issued. And and my time was also split in general between duties of the executive director and uh, Hudson River Area Administrator, which. I will report on later in the meeting with my report. My report's on page 23, and uh, if there's any questions additional, I'll be happy to take that. Any questions with regards to the executive director's report? Uh, one question, Mr. Chairman. Mike, um, you're serving a double role right now, as we know. Mm -hmm. um, are you finding... Uh, you finding it to be a little too overwhelming at this point? Is there anything we need to do to help you at this point? Uh, there's a lot of responsibility. Point, that's a good question. And at this point in the year where uh, the summer season the, around Great Sacandaga has failed off to uh, minimal activity with uh, and dealings with permit holders, uh, I'm able to work between the two of them uh, fairly easily. We we're fortunate to um, have good field staff there, the, the few that are left. 
to uh, to really fill in the blanks. I've uh, they've covered most of the field work. Uh, not had to step in when necessary to still direct and guide, but uh, I haven't because of the uh, executive director role. Um, haven't really had to uh, or been able to spend uh, very much time in the field portion of the uh, administrator's role. So at this point, there's nothing we need to do to help you? At this point, uh, we're in pretty good shape as far as being able to deal with that. Uh, I still have to address correspondence. Uh, I'm still reviewing the correspondence that would go out under the administrator's duties. Um, field assistants uh, and the land surveyor, the field assistant and land surveyor are have really picked up a lot of that slack in terms of uh, inspections. They've been trained to do it over the last several years. Uh, I don't see any hitches in it at this point. Mm -hmm. Thanks, man. Sure. <coughs> any other questions? Okay. Um, go right into the committee section. Uh, under the permit system, Mr. Hayes, uh, if you could. I really don't have anything at this, uh, <coughs> at this time. No old business or new business, none. Okay. Um, under governance, Mr. Astapan, if I could, uh, A, I would like to discuss an executive session. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before I start, uh, there is a mandatory, a mandatory training course for all new board members. Um, I've got the schedule, the training schedule, so if you want to see me sometime today, I'll give that to you. And you can either go online and, and register, or uh, you can contact uh, one of the girls uh, at the office, and I'm sure they'll assist you. I know Lori has been very helpful on the black side. I'm sure Ann can be helpful on the Hudson side. Um, I just wanted to mention that. It's very important that you attend one of these uh, sessions. And that's only for new board members. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, under old business, there's none. Under new business, um, letter A, I would request that be discussed in executive session. Um, I don't know. If the board member, the, the governor's board, do uh, you have any... Uh, Discussion on that, or pros or cons, or any objections? None. Okay. Uh, second reading, uh, the workplace violence prevention policy. I'll turn that over to Mr. Leslie. Uh, okay. It's on. Begins on page uh, 48 of your packet. This is the second reading of the uh, policy on workplace violence prevention. Uh, between the initial reading at the September meeting and uh, today's date, uh, we have received no uh, feedback suggesting changes. Therefore, the policy remains exactly as it was at the September meeting. Um, we're certainly available to answer any questions that you might have uh, now that you've had a month to look at it. Uh, the expectation is that we take another look at it uh, at our next meeting in November. Any questions from any of the board members, Mr. Leslie? Would we approve, uh, ask for a vote in November, or would we, we wait we another could, month? We could approve it in November. Oh. Uh, there's, uh, doesn't doesn't appear to be any reason not to. Uh, you know, brief discussions with the, the CSEA rep suggested that they didn't have any drastic revisions they were looking to make. Okay. No questions further? We'll go on to the council report. Mr. Leslie again. Sure. My council's report is uh, on page 50. Uh, and it pretty much lines out what I've done during September. Uh, a couple of things that have happened since the <coughs> penning of that report. Uh, the United States District Court for the Northern District of New York uh, Chief Judge Mordu granted the district's motion for summary judgment in the National Grid's uh, federal lawsuit 
uh, wherein they had challenged, among other things, the sufficiency of the uh, statutory basis for the permit system, uh, that uh, granting of summary judgment ends the case for us unless uh, Niagara Mohawk uh, were to file an appeal. Uh, there's no indication yet that they uh, plan to do so. Rob, where would they appeal that to? What court? Um, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals for the uh, United States. And that's out of Manhattan. Um, the the uh, 2010-11 assessments, which were approved uh, for distribution to the uh, counties at the September meeting, were in fact served. Uh, Ann Fisher made the drive around to each of the county clerks and uh, served them in, in the same manner that they had been uh, done previously. Uh, so we have those all in the bag. Again, the counties have, uh, various counties have indicated their displeasure with the fact that they're getting a new assessment. Nobody has sued us yet. Uh, however, uh, newspaper reports suggest that that might be likely coming down the road. Uh, also during September, uh, at Rick's request and the request of our independent auditor, I prepared a statement regarding the collectability of those assessments. Uh, it's my opinion that ultimately we will prevail uh, with both the county lawsuit uh, that we first talked about and any subsequent suit that's a result of uh, this new 2010-11 assessment. Uh, I do believe that we have the statutory authority to uh, impose those assessments and that we took the procedural steps necessary to do it uh, appropriately. Um, also during this past month, uh, a buyer for the Mercer plant surfaced and then evaporated. So while we had uh, the likelihood that we would have another opportunity to exercise the right of first refusal to purchase the Mercer plant, uh, it looks like uh, there's no need to make that kind of a decision now. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. If there's any questions about uh, my activities during the month or anything I can address? Can we just go back to the uh, loss of the assessments that were uh, levied on the counties? <clears throat> could, you, could you give us a rough idea of what the schedule is with regards to the Supreme Court as people bringing things? And the... <clears throat> Judge Ferradino still... Yes, it is Judge Ferradino. Uh, the counties filed a an Article 78 petition in the Saratoga County Supreme Court. We filed our answer uh, through the Attorney General's office. The Attorney General has worked out a schedule for submissions by the counties, uh, all represented by single counsel and by us. Um, the county submissions were due last Friday. When I contacted the Attorney General yesterday to find out if I could get a copy of those in advance of this meeting. Uh, I was told that the county's uh, council was given a couple of extra days to file their submission. Uh, is that normal? Yes. It, it, is, uh, it is normal uh, to uh, provide your opposing council with uh, a few extra days is not a not a big lift for us. It shouldn't change the date of our submission, which I have written down, but I don't have off the top of my tongue. Uh, it is roughly three and a half weeks from now, I believe. Uh, so our submission should go out on the same day. The counties will then have an opportunity for reply and the court will then pick up all of those 
submissions and replies and uh, be prepared to review the matter beginning December 16th. Uh, that date hasn't changed. Uh, we should get a decision shortly thereafter. Early in 2011, you think? My guess is early in 2011. Uh, unless something happens that causes the submission dates to be pushed out again. Okay. Let's go with this scenario that they go ahead, the court takes all the information, they review it, they levy a decision and tender a decision in 2011 or say January. <coughs> um, what's the, how does that scenario play out? <clears throat> well, Clearly, the decision will be in our favor, so we will not be the appellant. Uh, but either party will have an opportunity to file a notice of appeal uh, following the judge's decision. And then that goes to what court? That would go to the Appellate Division Third Department, which sits in Albany. Uh, after they file their notice of appeal, which is on a relatively tight time frame, they then have, uh, I believe, nine months to perfect that appeal. Nine so months. that could take a significant amount of time. They can drag it out for years. They, they could drag it out for years. We have not sought, nor have they sought, a stay of the enforcement of the uh, levy. Yep. Um, I think our... Our next play, if they do appeal, is to get them to pay pending the appeal. Provided, of course, that we win the suit. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, as a matter of uh, order and record, uh, mm -hmm. when you asked for an executive session, I thought it would cover my request for an executive session, but uh, I think I'm out of, I better put it on the floor. Okay. Um, I'd like to request an executive session. It has to deal with personnel, and if discussed in public, it would undermine any potential litigation. I would request that only the following be uh, in the executive session. The board members, uh, Rob Leslie, uh, Richard Fiara, and Mike Clark. Okay. Is there Thank a second? You. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of an additional topic to be discussed in executive session, that being the topic that was referred to in the resolution, in the motion. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Vote. Okay, carried. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's all from our committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. Finance. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to appoint uh, Mr. Stover to the chairmanship of the Finance Committee. Um, and I think what we can do is help you along the first few minutes here. Okay. okay. Um, but on page uh, 51 in the packet are the, approved, uh, the expenses that we're looking to have approved. So if you could... Mr. Brooks Dresser and Mr. Astapan will be on your committee as indicated. <clears throat> on page 51, I think all you have to do is ask for a uh, motion for approval. Okay, our total expenses for the, this month were $277.50 for mileage. I do have a motion that we. Uh, Pay the uh, mileage fees for let's see um, Paul Cornell and Ronald Pinkoff, and the amounts uh, stated on the uh, report. Yep. Uh, I'll stop making motion. Coming out of committee, then uh, there's a resolution to approve the extent. Uh, so then they're uh, coming out of committee. There's a motion 
that uh, we approve the expenses uh, listed on page 51 in the amount of 277.50. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Abstain. Mr. Mr. Cornell, abstain. Okay. And then. Uh, On your agenda, Mr. Stover, you can see that there's no old business. And all you have to do is ask Mr. Ferrar to do his CFO report. Okay, Mr. Ferrar, you do your report. I will. On page, my report is on page, begins on page 52 and through 57. I'll just summarize some of the items on my written report beginning on page 52. I spent the majority of the past month uh, working to finalize the district's independent audit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2010. Uh, in doing so, I worked very closely with uh, Randy Shepard, who is the uh, audit principal from uh, the Bonavio Group. Randy will be presenting the independent audit at the board's November meeting next month. Um, those, so the final report is complete. It has been uh, certified, if you will, by me as being complete. And uh, accordingly, I've submitted it via the public authority report system uh, in accordance with public authority law. So the report has now been submitted. It's out. Uh, on our own website, and, and there's also a link off of the New York State Public Authority website. So, and that was done prior to uh, the due date, which was, I believe, September 30th. If anybody has any questions, I think, Mr. Estefan, you may have a question yeah, on the audit. Yeah, thank sure. you. Sure. Uh, on page 20 of the um, audit report, mm -hmm. the last paragraph. Yeah, hold on. Let me just skip. And I'll read the uh, last two sentences. Yes. Management believes that sufficient cash and reserves exist, as well as delaying certain capital projects which would allow them to operate to June 30th, 2011. Mm -hmm. Operations subsequent to that period may be significantly impacted by the lack of assessment revenue being generated. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious as to what we've done, or I guess you, because you've been working the numbers for right. us. The last meeting I was at, June, mm -hmm. uh, we were in crisis financially. And now it looks like we can operate until June 30th, 2011. At least. And I'm just curious as to how the numbers uh, were adjusted and where they were adjusted to make this possible for us. No. To get us through June? Yeah. Well, the 2011. The primary, uh, I think, factor behind that was the layoffs back in May. So uh, by taking out over $500,000 of labor and associated benefits, that is probably the single factor, the second being uh, the continued moratorium, if you will, on any capital projects. Um, we have cut, slashed, uh, our run rate in terms of disbursements, uh, in terms of the way we operate, are probably uh, at 10-year uh, levels. That we, I don't think we've seen these low spend rates for 10 years. <coughs> Having said that, uh, I, the chief engineer during his report will uh, get into a couple of projects that may absolutely be necessary to do. and. Again, my estimates and forecasting has been, again, with that, the, that single most important caveat being that we have a moratorium on capital projects. That's not to say if there isn't something we absolutely have to do because of you know, the safety and security of the structures that we wouldn't do that. And if we did, then we would certainly be reaching out uh, to the state to assist us in, in funding for any of those projects that may. A specific project. A specific project, correct. For projects, uh, I mean, right now we, I think there's one we have in mind. Mm -hmm. Thanks, um, for, you've answered my question because right. I, yeah, you know, I know things change. Uh, it, it's not a crystal ball, and um, you know, I was happy to see and read this, 
So I was just curious as to how we got from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. And you've answered that question for me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Jack. I would also recommend that the all the board members, I, I believe, receive the bound copy of the independent audit. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, uh, bring your reports with you in November, and Randy Shepard will be more than happy to answer your questions. Second paragraph of my report, uh, we got into that a little bit. Uh, the cash flow is, is stable thus far, and uh, we expect to see that through the close of this fiscal year. Um, with specific regard to cash flow, we did receive the uh, school tax bills for this current fiscal year, and uh, those bills have been received. We've booked them, we've charged them, but we do have them as a on payables, but not to pay. So right now, as we uh, sit here today, we have two years of school bills outstanding and one year of county uh, property bills outstanding, and by January, we'll, we will have two and two and we will be somewhere around $5 million in arrears for total taxes. And it's probably pretty even split 2.5 million in school and 2.4 in change in property taxes. Um, quickly, the staff continues to look at the operating model, um, new operating model for the Hudson River area. We, we did discuss at length, uh, the erosion control in terms of the actual placement of uh, stone. And and I, I had in here that I was going to seek the board's approval to proceed with a liquidation of assets. Uh, at this point, I'd like the, the board to just uh, acknowledge that I would like to uh, put together a plan to uh, liquidate Yeah, that I would like to seek the board's uh, consideration for uh, the staff to proceed with a plan to look at assets, primarily those that involve uh, the erosion control placement activity. Uh, there's several, probably five assets that we're looking at, two dump trucks and uh, an older uh, extended cab pickup, uh, an SUV, the work boat, possibly, but we'd like to look at what we might want to do for an inter interim period of time where uh, two of the dump trucks that we're talking about are certainly not new. They're not old. They're about 2004, one, and the other one is a 99. Uh, they have not probably been out of the garage for a period of time. Since April. Since April. Um, <clears throat> They don't, uh, we know how vehicles depreciate, and, and these vehicles are depreciating as <coughs> we speak. If a point in time came where we were funded, received our assessments, we, we could repurchase. Uh, so I think short term, this may be a liquidation that we you know, may have to take place. But I'm not 100% there. I'd like to put a kind of look at it a little more closely and then come back in November, December. and see if the board would be... Uh, yeah, I guess my opinion on that, yeah. and this is the first I uh, thought about this to any great extent, mm -hmm. that those assets, uh, if you could give us a number that you could expect to receive on the open market or to an auction... Without the work vote, we're talking 50,000. Yeah. Just, I mean, this is just yeah. a ballpark figure. So it's, we're not talking um, 500,000. Yeah. Just so you... It's, it's not a, a huge amount of money in the scope of, of what we're looking at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then to be forced to go out and purchase new. We could lease them. Uh, yeah. Or lease them mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, it, it just may not be the best financial move. But we can take it, it about not, it. We'll again, take a look no, at it. Finally. I'd like to look at it more closely. <coughs> and the work boat is. Well, the work boat I definitely would not want to sell. Yeah, and again, because it probably right now, in terms of uh, its single well, it's use integral purpose, it's kind of a single it's purpose. It's integral in, in the erosion control, yeah. and we know we have to get back to erosion control. Mm -hmm. uh, 
sooner or better. Right. I think one of the drivers behind looking at that is maybe other ways to do erosion control, which would be more land-based than water-based. But no, absolutely, given the way that we've done it. Rick, are you just, work you're just looking for a general approval, or you, you need a well, motion? Well, right now, well, like I'm, I guess I'm, I'm not asking for the board to do anything at this point. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at it more closely. Uh, if we think there's something there, I would certainly come back to the board in November well, or December. I, I myself think it's a good idea. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to have a report mm -hmm. before the board to take a look at it. And you're, you're, you're looking to liquidate these assets because we're not using them right now. Well, right, right. Basically. That, that's exactly right. But down the road. It's not something that we can liquidate, be done with, and never need again. It's, it's we're going to need something to replace it right. down the road, right? Again, yeah. we're not. I'm not familiar with Mike, erosion did control. You want to yeah. 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 I would. The only thing I was going to add to that was relating specifically to the work boat liquidation. <clears throat> selling off may not necessarily be the only option. I did. Uh, I haven't really gotten very far with it yet, but I did reach out to. The contractor, uh, general contractor working on the Bachelorville Bridge, saying, "Look, would you be interested in?" Five? I threw it out there, even possibly leasing for a period of time. Um, if anybody could use it right now, probably they might have a use for it for a, a year or that make what have you. So we need to be creative, and that's that's what you're suggesting. Yeah, that's what we have to no. just take a look at. Yeah. It. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to. Work. I think it's and a good idea. And we do, and we do, we have a. A later model uh, dump truck that we have are not considering. Mm -hmm. We have the track loader, so we have right. other equipment that would the, enable the us. The bottom to line, in terms of needs, we absolutely need to have one heavy dump truck uh, because it's got to move the equipment. It has to tow the trailer that moves the backhoe, that moves the uh, skid steer, and anything else that we would need to mobilize anywhere. With potentially within the regulating district. Well, it's got to be one at least. Uh, you know, Rick, Rick will put together, you know, a list and the numbers and we sh I would think get, a couple I'll give you get some opinions here. from staff as to, you know, what they think. What when we're when we're actually operating and doing the erosion control, how much of that equipment is being used all the time? All of it? Or well, generally, depends our staffing. On it. Right. Well, yeah, uh, that's, assuming that's, assuming we had assuming full staff, staff that uh, yeah. prior to May twelfth, uh, we, we would run two dump trucks, the work boat, and and of course and potentially the backhoe. Mm -hmm. Not always. Um, okay. They would shuttle stone back and forth and. I'm just I'm just looking to see what we would need if we went back. Rarely did we ever that I'm aware of and. and there were always two trucks generally being used. The third, uh, at this point, <clears throat> okay. it wasn't all the time. It, it, it was much less frequent than, than running two. Uh, it's worth looking at. Right. Why, why don't we give that some thought and we'll mm -hmm. address it in November. <clears throat> okay. Just two more things, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may. Sure, please. On my report, last paragraph, I uh, we received from Rob, was that directly from FERC or was that from the vendor for the headwaters benefit determination, the letter to at request additional information? From the letter of it, information from us? Yeah, no, the one that or came no. from, I believe, did it come from FERC? FERC sent a letter. Rob had discussions with the contractor. Right, who is Oak, <coughs> Oak Ridge National Oak Ridge. Laboratory. Uh, that's the uh, but FERC is the one that sent the letter indicating that they needed additional info. So that letter included requests for far more detail in terms of the maintenance cost of the district, which is what they're going to use to complete their benefits determination. Uh, the level of detail, and I've spent several hours at certain times of the week getting more and more into it, and because of the uh, a varying level of detail and the record keeping, of, and they're going back to 1930. So there isn't a single approach that I've been able to take in, you know, gathering this information. I think I'm to the point now where I'm able to now extrapolate off of certain periods of years and then use that percentage to come up with a number which I will pass along to them. They did give us a contact to see if this is something that they would accept. Beyond that, uh, 
some of this information in terms of getting the exact detail and most of the maintenance we did we've done over the years has been very static it's either been erosion control or some maintenance project of a structure and once you get prior to 1993 you're really just looking at the old bound minute books and you have and you have to go to every uh, minutes section summary and try to glean from that you know the information so it's been I, I believe I can pull it off the way that I'm the, the approach I'm taking whether or not they'll accept that I'll probably be able to report to the board uh, by <coughs> November unfortunately it's due October 31st they gave us 45 days so we'll, we'll just see where it takes us I, I think I can get it done in that manner but I guess I'm 50-50 on whether or not they're going to tell me no, it really has to be something more detailed. Um, last item, there is a resolution I'd like to submit to the board for your consideration. <coughs> Do they have a copy of this or should I? There was a copy that was emailed, I believe. It was emailed. Yeah. Yeah. I have a copy of that. I'll just summarize the at, at the June meeting in 2010, uh, I had reported that uh, there was an adjustment, um, that there needed to be an adjustment to the general board allocation, and the adjustment was based, to my surprise, actually in, in our enabling legislation, uh, specifically 15-21-41. Two uh, speaks directly to how the expenses of the board are split, and for some period of time, probably going back to the late 80s, <coughs> the allocation was always based on the budget. So the Hudson River budget was 80% of the total budget, and the black was 20, it was 80-20. The statute is clear. The, the split was always intended to be based on monies received. In a perfect world when you're receiving your assessment, the budget and the money received split will be the same. Hudson River is 80% and the 80% they're going to get through their assessment because they received their assessment, generally speaking, at 100%. Because we've had the hit as a result of the U.S. District Court ruling where our statute was preempted, the Hudson River has not been able to receive money in the same percentage split as the budget. Accordingly, I did a calculation on the actual monies received, Hudson versus Black, and that percentage split changed rather dramatically. So, and the, the dramatic change is going to end up and result in a negative impact in the Black River area's budget for the general board allocation, which they budgeted somewhere anywhere between 10, 12, and 15 percent off the top of my head for the three years. Uh, for this fiscal year, it's 12.76, and the estimated split based on the monies that we're going to receive, Hudson and Black, that split's going up to 38.16. So it's going up over triple. So their budget of $174,000. Uh, which I believe is in the resolution. Yes, the allocation is 174,074. This current fiscal year, which is the second year of the three-year budget, will in all likelihood be exceeded by approximately 186,000. I am at the board in, in approving this resolution. It is not changing the bookkeeping. The money that is. Uh, paying for the increased allocation on the Black River side has been and will continue to be uh, their short-term investment fund surplus that they've amassed over the years. <clears throat> so it is not, it is not a short-term intermediate or quite frankly a long-term funding issue. It is clearly a budget issue in terms of if this were not to have occurred, uh, the Black certainly wouldn't be dipping into their uh, reserves at some level to cover this you know, additional allocation. So I'm really asking the board in terms of the uh, the resolve portion to just recognize the fact that it is going to be a substantial budget overage in that line item for the Black River. And that's all I'm asking the board to do with this resolution. 
Right. Just looking at it in language terms. Yes. Let's go back to the council's report, mm -hmm. indicating that he is absolutely positive, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, within reason, of, of uh, us being victorious, mm -hmm. so to speak, in the uh, settlement, uh, the allocation. Would that then, we would then be collecting rec retroactively Correct. monies Correct. that would be attributed to the Hudson. Correct. Would then we make an, a budgetary adjustment back Correct. to the black? Correct. In my last paragraph, I tried to articulate that. You did a much better oh. job than I did. But once the Hudson River assessments for you know, the past due, current uh, assessments are received, then the allocations at that point would be brought back in line with the budgeted amounts, but also <coughs> specifically with regard to the past due assessments, mm -hmm. we would then readjust and say, well, we based it on what we thought money was going to be received for this period of time. We received this money here, which goes back over that period of time, we'd make a readjust. Okay. And whether that, and that certainly should bring the Black River right back in line sure. with the, with the uh, budgeted percentage mm -hmm. so. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So I offer this resolution for the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yeah, please. Um, I understand the concept mm -hmm. of this, and I understand you know why you're bringing it to the table, and mm -hmm. it makes good sense from you know where you're sitting. Mm -hmm. But I have a real problem with it. I really don't think the statute was intended, or nor does it really, or did it mean what we're going to apply it here. I think it was meant under normal business practices, the way the Hudson and the Black were set up, mm -hmm. understanding that revenues were coming in, mm -hmm. not anticipating this type of situation. So I don't think the statute was meant to be um, put in place or used or adjusted during the crisis that we're in. And as, as you know quite well, mm -hmm. and these other gentlemen, I'm sure, when you run a business, if you've got, uh, say, a subsidiary, and that's going bankrupt, and if you're going to pull from, uh, funds from the main corporation to keep the subsidiary going, mm -hmm. but not really knowing if you can wait out the court decision, mm -hmm. or if you're going to get the money back for sure, mm -hmm. you're going to bankrupt both of them. That's my concern here. Mm -hmm. um, we're taking money from the black, which I don't feel is intended for the Hudson, for the statute. And I don't doubt our, our counsel, but I know, we all know litigation. This mm -hmm. is going to go on for years. And unless the, 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 the state government steps in and does something, HR is going to be bankrupt because we're going to suck everything from the black to keep this portion going that we're talking about. And we're going to end up possibly bankrupting the black as well as the HR going down. That's how I see it. Because this litigation is going to go on for years, in my opinion. I don't doubt counsel's opinion, but mm -hmm. the, the legal process yeah. in our country is terrible. Mm -hmm. It prolongs everything. Mm -hmm. It gives the attorneys too much time to do what they need to do. And the court system is overburdened. Mm -hmm. It just takes way too much time. And that's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Well, from an intermediate st a standpoint, if you go out between now and the end of this fiscal year, uh, the impact of this change, which, uh, again, I've, I've, I've not only looked at the statute, I've, and and I did the initial research. I, I brought uh, my findings to council. But my initial research took me back to the minutes of the meeting that followed the change of the statute, where they specifically talked in detail about what the intent was. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I can certainly, you know, bring that documentation. It, it is clear to me that was the exact intent, uh, was to look at was to, in fact, it, it was almost a, a genius in the way that they looked at the, the way the two would operate. Because 
they were separate for many years. Well, then, the council, then the council weigh in on this. It it prevents the major beneficiary on one side of the ledger from having undue influence over the general board and the board expenses by completely eliminating that one revenue stream and thereby crippling general board. What it forces is the district as a whole to run as a whole entity. Mm -hmm. So I, that I understand that. So well, that it but the point is is that it's not the blacks' fault that the Hudson can't collect its money that's do it. And you can take that to the other side if on the black side mm -hmm. if one of the paying customers doesn't pay for the year, then what you're suggesting is we have to readjust the numbers or the percentages because they didn't pay, so that the Hudson will pay more. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. And, and again, and, and we would look at that. But that's, that, it's that not was how the statute, in my opinion, reads. Because whether it's the Hudson or Black doesn't matter to me because we're looking to protect everything. Don't, don't misunderstand me. My, my obligation, my fiduciary duty, is to protect the Hudson and the black as a whole because that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. But it's not the black's fault that the Hudson can't collect its money. The money's due us, mm -hmm. due Hudson. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's there, you know, on a piece of paper, but we can't collect it. it, it you know, it, it, it's not the blacks' fault. Right. No, and I and I agree. It is not the blacks' fault. But in I terms know, of the concern uh, with regard to going bankrupt, if you look at the the end of this year, and then if you go to the fiscal year, and then if you go to the end of next calendar year, which would be December 2011, there is based on this current split, mm -hmm. there is no short of the black losing their beneficiary assessment, there, there is no scenario whereby the black could ever go bankrupt. They have $3.7 million in reserves mm -hmm. and they receive almost 900000 in assessments. So based on this change, the Hudson River, if we were not to receive our assessment, would long since go belly up, long before we would even scratch the surface of their reserves. And I looked at that, I, I, I ran the numbers and I just mm -hmm. wanted to be the last, and I think I've been pretty clear in terms of some staff meetings we've had that, uh, I would have, in taking this action, I looked very closely at any possible operational impact to the mm -hmm. black. Uh, I'm sure you did. Not even beyond their current operating budget, but also at their reserves, which, quite frankly, the only way that the two areas have been able to uh, amass surplus in terms of having any money set aside for structural projects is really to set aside your surplus. So there, we don't have any other mechanism uh, other than the black servants could bond and, and we could bond. But I still don't see that as, as um, a legitimate cause because the black is very flush and will not go bankrupt to pull from the black. I, I don't I, I, I don't agree with that. Can I, can I clarify something here? Sure. Mm -hmm. Please. Could you define are, are we we have a mission. Yes. And does the term bankrupt apply to us anywhere? Uh, well chapter nine. Can can Are you we, asking, can yes, we go bankrupt? Could we, possibly? We can't be forced into bankruptcy. Okay. Um, I mean, it's been, the term's been thrown around here now several times. Right. I, we have not explored the mechanism for doing so. Right. It's I chapter have, 9. I right. Mean, it is what it but is. But as a public beneficiary, as a public beneficiary, is still an option? It, it is an option. I, I expect that there are significant other options that will come down the pike before that. If we 
were to go bankrupt, we are one entity. Right. We're not two separate entities. Correct. We have two separate funds mm -hmm. that derive from two districts, <coughs> but we are a single entity at this point. It is the Hudson River Black River regulating district. Um, so we rise and fall as one. one right. We, we rise and fall as one entity. The, the statute is written, and, and as Rick points out, its brilliance comes from the fact that the contribution from each sub-entity to the, to the operation of the general board is not based on amounts or expenses accrued, but on monies received, which directly forces all of the entities to share equitably in those costs. And while if you were looking at a, you know, a single small beneficiary who hadn't paid, you, know, you might be looking at a 5% hit on one side or the other, and that moves the line very, 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 very small. The same theory applies where we have a massive hit to one side of the ledger that, that isn't on the other. It, I'd also point out that as much as we've made a fairly substantial change in the allocation, it still remains 62% Hudson, 38 Black. So it is certainly not right. lopsided the other way. I mean, the Hudson is still paying the lion's share of the general board expenses. And if, in fact, the Hudson were to cease to operate, which again, I, I, I still don't see a scenario where that would be the case, I, I don't the Black would have to pick up 100%. They'd have to pick up 100%. Now maybe the general board shrinks, but even 100% of a smaller general board is still going to be fairly significant. So no, you just restructure them. Say again. You restructure. That's all. By restructuring, you can eliminate a lot of costs because if what, if you're saying that, for example, if it, just the Black Riverside's left, mm -hmm. you're not going to need much staff. To handle Black Riverside. Well, you still have many of the same expenses. You still have legal. You still have personnel. You, you know, well, they, still have, they have their personnel. You still have a board. Still have board expenses. You still need the engineer. All of these things that are general board that they're general board because it's. Yeah, but it's you, you can you, you can fold have, in different so duties. The board could do quite frankly. You know, and cut costs very very quickly and very efficiently. You know, government's too big, as we all know. Right. And I'm sure that some of us could sit down and, and we diss down to nothing. Right. And uh, the general board would be very small and very efficient and uh, cost effective, if just on that side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't take me wrong. I'm not looking to replace anybody. Right. You guys do a wonderful job. You have a, you probably are overworked from what I've seen. You know, and that's not my purpose, but mm -hmm. I'm looking at it from a business standpoint. Mm -hmm. We're running a corporation here, right. and I, I just can't see where you put good money into bad. Yes, I, I have faith in our council, but we know litigation. It's going to go on for years, and, you know, the scenario that, you know, we'll, we'll, that things will be okay in, in two years, well, if it is, if it happens, and. It's a minor miracle to me. It, it almost, from my perspective, it, it's more of a family unit than a corporation or a corporate subsidiaries. It's mom and dad. Both are working. Both are paying the bills. One of them is out of work. The other pays all the bills while, the, while dad is out of work. The family unit continues. And the obligation of both sides to pay those common expenses remains even if it goes on for a long period of time. I understand. And I understand where you're coming from and you know, what you're saying makes sense. But I just felt a need to to bring this up. Is there any action that you're looking for us to take 
or is this a general discussion that goes in the record? The, again, basically this resolution us, serves one purpose. Basically the board recognizing the fact that this is occurring. Absolutely. It just and recognizes that we're changing the budget on the fly side right now. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the gist of it, right? That's important. We're not necessarily changing the budget. Well, we're not changing, right. The budget is always the budget. Right. It, it's, it's, it's recognizing the fact that we're going to be exceeding mm -hmm. a budget line item. Right. I guess that's, yeah. And that's all it does. It's an act authorizing me to spend more money, less money. Well, actually, it is. I mean, it, it, we're readjusting the percentages, so the black is spending more and Hudson is spending less. Correct. So. But I mean, but we're not doing it in terms of officially saying we're changing, changing our the budget. budget. Oh, okay. okay. In Correct. terms of the yeah. three-year budget, mm -hmm. and I, don't get me wrong, the board, if, if the board, you know, saw a... Uh, value in revisiting the budget, you could certainly do that. It's generally historically n never been done, but uh, yeah. We're there, there is a challenge within a three year budget that well, uh, we certainly makes it easy to go back and. In a manner of speaking, the fact that we laid off our, our, mm -hmm. our 12 employees and yeah. we've stopped an erosion. Correct, we didn't change our plan. plan. Right. Significant. And following those actions, we did not go back and change the budget, which you really don't have to do. I mean, you just recognize that in certain areas, in the labor, the labor is going to come well under budget. We're still on committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Right. Chairman. Okay. And now we go to operations. Mr. Brooks, got you. I guess okay. Yeah. No old business. So, I'm sorry, we're okay. not going to take action on oh, this resolution? Want, yes, sir. Oh, right. that's what I, I asked. Well, I, I, again, I, I submitted it to the board for your consideration. Or you could. Uh, did you email that? Yes. Yeah, and I gave it back. Right. I'm sorry, it's a two sided. We're doing everything two sided. Oh. Well, that's that's awesome. Are you still kind of supposed to go back to, or do you want to make this a item for the board? Make it item for the board. Because it really technically. Well, that's up to you, Mr. Chairman. We'll make it a <clears throat> make it a an item under the whole board. Then, so on the back of the uh, memorandum that was passed out uh, about five, ten minutes ago, there's a resolution uh, signifying that the board of the Hudson River Black River Regulating District recognizes the annual deficit in the general board allocation account in the Black River area and recognizes and authorizes the CFO to proceed in accordance with the section of the law ECL 15-2141 per parenthesis 2. <clears throat> and we have had discussion. Is there further discussion with regards to the resolution? No statement. Okay. You want to, let's do a roll call, please, on this. Is there a motion? Did we get a motion? Oh, we need a motion. I'm sorry. I'll make that motion. Motion made. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a second. Questions? Let's do the roll call. Okay. Mr. Bergstresser? Aye. Mr. Cornell? Aye. Mr. Astapan? Uh, with regrets, no. Mr. Stover? Aye. Mr. Hayes? Aye. Mr. Klein? Aye. Motion passes. And I believe that's all out of all the business out of finance, and then we can get back into operations. All right, under operations, under new business, the Hawkinsville Dam Remediation. Yes. Robert. Thank you, On page 59 of my memorandum to the board, uh, operations committee, uh, concerning the next phase in a uh, remediation or uh, removal of, of Hawkinsville Dam, as a little background for the board. Um, over the years through our annual safety inspections and those conducted by the DEC, uh, it's been determined that at least a portion of, if not uh, several elements of Hawkinsville Dam requires remediation or will likely require remediation, uh, both, or I should maybe say either from one or both of a structural or hydraulic perspective. Um, structurally, obviously, the <coughs> The uh, concrete structure itself is deteriorating and has been deteriorating over the years. Hydraulically, uh, 
from the uh, DEC dam safety regulation standpoint and its ability to, to pass the uh, appropriate uh, design flow. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we have done a couple of studies over the last couple of years uh, regarding the, the hydraulics of, of the site. The next step in that process <coughs> for remediation uh, involves an assessment of, of the, an actual remediation alternative or a removal alternative. Remember, uh, we, we combined both of those into one uh, engineering step and so back in mid-2009 uh, following board authorization the staff solicited statement of qualifications from firms for this evaluation uh, however due to the, uh, uh, the the financial situation uh, in July 2009 the uh, or I guess it was September 2009 this project was temporarily postponed, one of the other capital improvement projects. Uh, we are now um, recommending that we, as a result of the uh, several projects that were brought to the board's attention last month uh, with regard to rescheduling, now ready to move forward with this, uh, we did receive back in 2009, 21 uh, requests for the uh, solicitation for qualifications packages. Uh, we had reviewed them at that time, evaluated uh, the three respondents to that request for qualification. We had three engineering firms, Gomez and Sullivan, Malcolm Perney, and, and Malone McBroom, who submitted qualifications and they were evaluated uh, in mid-2009 uh, by a team of three staff members uh, scored according to the qual request for qualification uh, procedures were included in the solicitation package and an evaluation was conducted uh, with a review of each firm's experience, personnel experience, project approach, and experience with similar work. Page 60 uh, contains a table of the evaluation outcome, the average total score and scoring uh, of the individual team members as well as the, the for the three uh, firms that submitted qualification. And uh, the evaluation team recommends conditionally awarding the work to Malone McBroom, Inc., and the staff seeks board acceptance of the evaluation team's recommendation and authorization to request the scope of work and a fee proposal from Malone and McBroom. And there is a, a resolution on page 61 for that. Accepting our recommendation uh, following the evaluation of the qualifications to uh, conditionally award the work to Malone and McBroom and uh, to move forward on the request for proposal and uh, scope of work and fee proposal. My personal opinion, we've been having a strong law and we've got to start looking at maintenance before it becomes a prop. Right. Rob, for the edification of the people that um, might be watching the web <coughs> in the future, can you tell us where Hawkinsville is? Sure. It's uh, about three miles east of Boomville off of Route 12. Uh, about uh, maybe 25 miles north of Utica. Okay. I know I, I was there for the inspection and just discuss some of it with you. The re by remediation, was that some of the restoration work that you were suggesting or would have liked to have seen? Is that what remediation? Yeah, the remediation involved? would be, a, <clears throat> from a structural standpoint, would be some of the deteriorated concrete. We have a non-overflow section, a dam right. section adjacent to the spillway itself, uh, which is, uh, well, certainly when I came to the district 11 years ago, was pretty substantially deteriorated. And uh, we put some Band-Aids on it over the years uh, to stabilize it, to secure it a little bit in, in the meantime. Uh, from a hydraulic standpoint, uh, in order for the structure to meet 
the uh, design flow that is prescribed by the DEC, there would also need to be some modifications to the overall facility. Exactly what those will be, we, well, you know, I think and we'll be looking at options, hopefully, from an engineering firm as to how to meet that. And just to clarify one thing, that's more of a decorative dam than a functional dam, isn't it? Well, in terms of, <laughs> in terms of our operations, you can see it, yeah. uh, yes, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure the, there are be several folks that live upstream mm -hmm. of that dam who Consider put a lot more uh, 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 yeah. value in, in it in terms of pretty, operation. It is a pretty dam. Right? It is, yep. And it, and it does supply, a, you know, a, a nice head pond uh, for recreating. Uh, yeah. Upstream, so it is a busy area. Whenever I drive by. All right, get a motion out of committee. <coughs> Accept it. Second. No. Okay. I guess I made the motion. Sure. Out of committee. Okay. <coughs> we have a resolution. It's on page sixty-one. It's coming out of the operations committee, with regards to the. Remediation and removal alternatives of work to be awarded to Malone and Dick McBroom. Um, uh, is, we don't need a motion, so uh, all those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Item number two ice sluice remediation. Do you have? Uh, I see it on his. I don't have it on mine. <coughs> is that, um, we could certainly could you, could address you that. There address is a memo. <coughs> yep. It's a memo on page 113. Uh, this again was, it, it is a Hudson River area project which was uh, postponed. <coughs> uh, as we had indicated last month, there were was both the promise and the intent to revisit some of the yes. projects that we had postponed. The ice loose at Conklinville Dam was uh, a structure that was evaluated as part of GDI's assessment of, of, of the overall facility to um, meet some of the requirements that were placed upon us by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission over the last few years. Uh, that evaluation stemmed from the need for the evaluation stemmed from our uh, uh, Part 12 safety inspection, which occurred uh, the, the five-year Part 12, which was six years ago, and uh, you know, as a, as a result of uh, I guess time and and uh, based on the GEI uh, evaluation of the. Uh, the structure itself, uh, staff believes it appropriate at this point in time to uh, reschedule that okay. work. And uh, I've outlined uh, a little bit about, uh, you know, within my memo, um, of the, uh, the, the history as well as the, uh, you know, where we would be going with this uh, project. Uh, one thing I will note, we did just receive yesterday a a revised proposal from GEI for the uh, construction inspection, construction monitoring portion. And uh, I had indicated it would be approximately 85,000. That was based on their previous, um, now some 14 or 16 month old estimate of cost. And uh, their latest uh, proposal that was submitted yesterday uh, was 92,300. Unfortunately. So again, the longer we so, talk, well, the worse. Certainly, you know, 15 months later, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's to be expected. Um, I've got down on my agenda a note that I made with regards to emergency status. Is this something that we really feel then that <coughs> well, needs it's to be paid attention to now because of the, of the material that is? Yeah, I think I think that's probably you know in part certainly it's it's driving. The need of, in addition to the fact that we were just clearly going to revisit these uh, postponed projects a year later, uh, there have been some observations of some increased leakage through the structure, and uh, over the you know, as compared to the last year, uh, it's clearly 
I think the one item out of or the top item out of those maybe two or three items that you put together that uh, are on that list of remediation or, or repair or capital projects that have been planned for the Conklinville Dam and uh, you know, all of those issues combined and, 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 uh, and then again leads to us to make people watching on the web or listening, um, if you could just tell us what the function of the ice sluice, yeah. sluice is. Well, uh, originally it was to to pass debris or, or ice um, when the water was lower than the spillway elevation at Conklinville Dam. It hasn't been functional for quite a few years. Uh, Why? They, well, because it was um, it really wasn't, I, I think, found that there was a need for it. Um, it the, the ice doesn't really form now that the uh, the operation is such that the ice really doesn't form. There isn't a, uh, uh, there isn't a need to remove wooden stop logs, wooden logs from uh, the structure in order to pass debris or, or, or ice. You have uh, EJ West hydroelectric facility has a fairly sizable rake so uh, some of the larger logs or debris that come in that could have been passed through that uh, um, are, um, are removed by, by them. And at some point in time, uh, the space between the stop logs was filled with concrete. Uh, the, the quality of that concrete, uh, the, the um, methods of construction are not really that well known. This was identified by GEI in their assessment of the of the ice loose and uh, so there's um, in, in terms of its integrity and, and its overall quality uh, there's some unknowns that combined with you know, some of the observations we've been making over the years uh, have led us to determine the need. And so what we're looking to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, is not to re rebuild the ice loose as it is we're looking to replace that section? Uh, actually, the, pr the proposed, proposal by the, the um, or, or the design by the engineer is to place concrete on the downstream face mm -hmm. of a, a portion of the spillway and uh, a wall on the other side of the ice loose and then also against the ice loose itself. It'll help both from a, a stability standpoint as well as eliminating any possibility that uh, if the concrete and timber uh, structure that is the ice loose itself were to give way that we would have an, you know we would avoid an uncontrolled release and, so and, the, and the structure will take care. You're looking for an approval to what uh, to reschedule? I, I, Cost it basically I mean it, I don't think we need anything other than uh, you know, informing you that we we intend to move forward with a previously approved project that was was budgeted and, mm -hmm. and authorized previously in, in terms of the budget uh, by the by the board. Okay. Um, but just to just to inform you as to what we plan to go through. Uh, also, because it, it became apparent, um, Mr. Ferrara had conversations with the Comptroller's office. And we do need to go back and rebid Correct. this project. It had yes. been bid. We, we did not elapse time. Yeah. We did not award the work. I mean, it was clearly mm -hmm. an apparent low bidder. Uh, but um, uh, despite the, the fact that the, the bidders, I think, were all willing to pretty much entertain their previous bids, <laughs> and, and in hopes that they were going to be awarded it, right. uh, we still will now need to go through that process. That's fine. So, okay. Thanks. I guess I have a question then for Rick, mm -hmm. and that would be. If we're going to look at this as uh, an emergency, some type, mm -hmm. something that high priority, high priority. <laughs> needs to be done, um, would that money come out of existing funds or would we apply to the state? We, we have already um, reached out to Peter Iwanowicz, okay. Secretary for the Environment, uh, regarding that specific project Good. and our need to have it funded. Mm -hmm. That we do not have the funds Good. currently. Now, again, the, the timing of this, correct me if I'm wrong, we're really looking at the, the work would probably not be done during the winter months. No. 
So we're probably looking, I mean, best case of that, or whatever. I think it's probably we're looking next at, June right. before work with construction would actually start. Right, so it's not, we're not asking the state to pony up $500,000 mm -hmm. in a month. Yep. So we have some time between now and the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, the state's fiscal year. The state's, well, no, our own fiscal year. Well, well, the state. No, no, no. The state's right, right. is April. Yeah. Right. Uh, to see, you know, for them to <laughs> hopefully do the right thing and, and you know, see if they can identify some funding. Good. Okay. So. Thanks, because we can tread the water water now. We don't want to tread. No, we don't. <laughs> Five counties down here. All right. If you've got any any wind left, you want to do your chief engineer? Sure, report? I'll hit I'll hit the engineering report. Um, things are much more calm um, compared to the previous month. Although it's a little a little misleading, but only because of the date at which we publish the the report, which uh, you can see on page 63, it's the second page of my report. The Precip totals are only through September 26th, so they don't include uh, the three-inch rainstorm that, that occurred over most of both watersheds. Um, so, uh, you know, clearly some of the 40s and 50 percent averages for, uh, as compared to historic, for precip in the watersheds, uh, dramatically increased uh, by the end of September 30th, um, and. Uh, yeah, but, you know, for the most part, we we have, we as we did for most of the summer, had a, a, other than that last couple of days, pretty uneventful uh, September in terms of of operation and and flow and uh, fairly on target. Yep, yep. And so at the end of September, September and beginning of the first of October, we yeah, used the reservoirs the way they are intended. So, so right. I'll take any questions if there are any. Other, otherwise, that. Is it extended report? In general, then water is right about where we would like it, or a little higher. Well, we're we are now yeah. uh, higher in all the reservoirs uh, in terms of historic average. So it's easy uh, for we, people to pull their docks out. It should be, yeah. I'm sure you do. Because it's still great in New York State. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> we have now uh, passed uh, that point at which reservoirs are still rising. And we're, Able to now release water, draw them down, specifically in um, in, in the Hudson at Sakandaga. Uh, at Indian Lake, we'll be starting, I believe, tomorrow. To start draw down a little bit uh, more rapidly. Uh, but at Sakandaga, we're able to now release the maximum allowed under the offer of settlement to 4,000 CFS. So we should be pulling that reservoir down, and which is some five or six feet above the. The uh, target elevation as a result of the high inflow that we received in the first week in October. Okay. <coughs> Welcome. Okay, next. Mike, you want to change that? Thank you. My report uh, for the Hudson River Administrator is found beginning on 115 um, during the month of September. It's worth noting that. Uh, uh, the second dog field office's admin staff, uh, staff of one presently, uh, began preparing for the re access permit renewal for Great Second Dog Lake. Uh, while that seems early, it's a relatively large task. Uh, it includes uh, getting a form to prep and uh, summarizing the boat counts that were performed twice over uh, the summer months. Uh, which factors into uh, the special and commercial access permits. Also, field staff has been busy uh, wrapping up uh, access permit surveys and other boundary surveys uh, as the uh, along the interstate property line as necessary. Um, a few permit holders are still coming through the doors, looking to do work that. Uh, in their permit area that you could only do in the later fall months as uh, the water levels are generally lower and will be again soon. Um, our, 
there have been ongoing uh, small in-house uh, maintenance projects, some painting, uh, groundskeeping, uh, whatever we need to do to, to keep uh, our facilities in the Hudson River area, uh, keep them up, get them ready for winter, and uh, keep them dressed up uh, as best we can also. Uh, and lastly, I did want to mention that although we are not uh, and have not, uh, for this uh, calendar year, placed uh, stone as part of the erosion control project. We have continued uh, with the erosion control program in that uh, their, the inspection of the shoreline of Great Sacandaga uh, for the purposes of uh, prioritizing and identifying uh, erosion control sites. That work has been completed by staff, uh, specifically the engineering system and if there are additional questions uh, regarding my report please um, feel free when do we mail out the permit forms December generally January? right after the first of the year probably mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're shooting to get them out in the, uh, the first week of the year mm -hmm. this year okay. Is that it? I have a question No, I don't have any Okay, no. thank you. My, my report starts on page 120 and 121. And basically, um, the staff in the Black River area is getting to get ready for the winter. We're finishing up our summer projects. Uh, we have finished the auxiliary spillway walkway. It's all been stripped and repainted. And um, we had FERC inspection earlier during the summer, which cited a couple projects that they would like us to address, and we have finished, I think, most of those, removing vegetation along the wall near the dam. Okay. And um, let's see what else we done. We're patching it presently. If you take our tour later on today, you'll notice that we are doing some patchwork on the face of the dam. <coughs> I really don't have a lot of other to add other than, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Klein did ask last month about our Mercer outages, and you'll note that we have none this month as compared to two million in the last month, okay. um, partially due to we've, they were closed down this month for part of the time because of, we're holding back water. Mm -hmm. So we had no outages this month, which is good news. Question. Um, now, FERC came over and inspected the still water dam. Although it's not a FERC regulated dam. License. 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 Not license. License. An exemption from licensing. Okay. Right. But it's still under their auspices to, to look at and inspect it. Right. The Federal Power Act uh, would, for a smaller facility that's exempt from licensing, would exempt them from the Part 12 safety inspection also. But due to the size, uh, the potential hazard, the hazard classification of still water, even though it's exempt from licensing, it still has to uh, conform with the Part 12 safety inspection uh, rules and, and laws. So uh, it's, it's exactly the same as Conklin, though, even though it doesn't have the actual license. And have we received their written report yet? Uh, no Too summary soon. from from their Too soon. Uh, yeah, usually October, November, from a following an August inspections is about the earliest that we will yes, see. Do we a, have any a, a, any reason to think that we will that any large issue might be addressed in their report? Or are you pretty no, confident no. We do receive a uh, a single page summary that states that they were there and that there was nothing major. Sometimes we do receive a, a more lengthy report from them. Mm -hmm. um, but as Carol mentioned, the, um, uh, the identified maintenance items did come in a, in a single letter. Mm -hmm. But other than that, there was nothing else. Okay, good. It was identified by FERC. Just didn't want any surprises. No. <laughs> Don't like surprises. <laughs> no surprise to you all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. Any questions? Under uh, board business, uh, 
Under old business, I have none, but under new business, I have uh, just two things. One, with the uh, Mr. Pintoff leaving the board, mm -hmm. uh, I have a need for an election of the first vice president. Mm -hmm. um, so if we could address that situation, um, I guess the easiest thing would be, would be to ask for uh, any nominations from the floor with regards to a first vice president position. May I uh, nominate Mr. Burkstresser? I'll second. Okay. <clears throat> if elected, you will serve, right? No, if elected, I will serve. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. if there, is there any other nomination? Hearing none, then if I could, by uh, we do a roll call, please, on that. Sure. For uh, the office of first vice president. Philip Klein. I'm sorry. Aye. Go ahead. David Burkstresser. Burke Stresser. Aye. Abstain. Mr. Cornell. Aye. Mr. Astapan. Aye. Mr. Stover. Aye. Mr. Hayes. Yes. Good. And then the only other piece of business is uh, there are a, a couple of new board members, uh, and I thought maybe we might be able to take a quick tour. The second vice president. Yeah. Now the oh, second, the second vice president. president. Okay. Yeah. Oh, let's finish that first then. Sorry. Uh, second vice president, if there are nominations from the floor. We to nominate Paul Cornell. Okay. Mr. Cornell, is there a second? Second that. Sister Appas to ask the band. Second. Uh, and again a voice vote. A voice vote or a roll call? Uh, let's do a roll call before we turn. Mr. Klein? In favor. Mr. Bergstress? Aye. Mr. Astapan? Aye. Mr. Stover? Aye. Mr. Hayes? Yes. Okay, good. And Mr. Cornell, he, he abstained, right? Yes. Yes, okay. I didn't hear the name called. So. Um, getting back, uh, could we do a, a tour of the Stillwater Dam then uh, following the, the meeting? And that would probably take, what, 20 minutes, half hour, something like that? Okay. And maybe you can point out some of the things that we. Yeah, that'd be fine. I appreciate that. All right, are there any board member questions or comments? Okay. Uh, we need a resolution for the next board meeting, and I think that's on page, the last page. Correct. 122. <clears throat> There's a resolution before the board with regards to the next meeting to be held in the town of Indian Lake. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will be on November 9th. Is that a little earlier than normal? Or no? uh, That's fine. I mean, it, just to know, I will not be attending that. Okay. Uh, we'll excuse you. Uh, so, if there's a motion on the floor. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> Carried. Okay, so we'll make I, I didn't get a first or a second on that. Who's the first, Mr. C? I second him. Okay. There you go. The, um, is there anyone other than Mr. Burke Stresser that knows they might not be able to make that meeting as of now? Okay. It's possible. I, I might not. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> then it's important that the other four show up uh, because we need four to, to pass mm -hmm. anything. Okay. Uh, there was a, a motion to go into executive session, which we will do now, and then we may very well convene after. Uh, okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, reconvene out of executive session, and uh, we do have some uh, business to report out of executive session. And uh, I'd like to turn it over to council to uh, review the uh, review the discussion that we had in executive session with regards to the management exempt uh, policy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we did discuss, uh, or the board did discuss the management exempt policy. There were basically four tenants that staff had brought to the board. Uh, for a first reading of a revision of that policy. Those involved uh, a reflection of a change in the 
uh, holidays uh, provided to the CSEA employees as a result of a recent collective bargaining uh, negotiation, uh, a change in the uh, reflection of the flex time versus comp time issue in the management guidelines, a change in the uh, manner in which uh, employees or the, the, the amount of time an employee could sell back to the district uh, in a vacation buyback uh, situation as well as um, a uh, reduction in the bereavement leave afforded to management confidential employees. Uh, the discussion also touched on the manner in which staff uh, use accrued vacation sick and personal time, uh, reducing the uh, minimum amount of time one could charge from a half day to one hour, uh, thereby uh, affording one hour increments, uh, thereby affording uh, management staff a little bit more flexibility uh, in the manner in which they take those leave times. This was the first reading of that policy, uh, pursuant to the district's policy on policies. Uh, the board has typically afforded itself uh, three opportunities to review a policy before adoption. Uh, this one could be read for a second time in November, read and then adopted uh, in December, uh, if the board so chooses. I think that sums it up pretty well. And is there anything else that we need to do? Uh, you had asked me at one point about the vehicle use policy. Uh, staff had noticed uh, at some point this fall that uh, the board's adoption of the vehicle use policy uh, at the January meeting was conditional upon uh, approval from the Department of Budget and the uh, Governor's Secretary for the Environment. Uh, we have not heard back affirmatively. Uh, we're not sure whether the former executive director heard back affirmatively with regard to those approvals. Uh, in taking another look at the uh, vehicle use policy, uh, we would suggest a few further revisions, uh, and we would suggest that we'll send those out to you in a uh, mailing in the next couple of days. Uh, making those additional revisions with the expectation that the board then come back uh, and address the vehicle use policy again at the November meeting, um, we would propose or recommend that you at that point adopt it unconditionally so that we can implement that policy uh, for all of our staff. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but based on the impact of the changes that we make, whether they're substantive or not, would we, that require three readings also? The, the vehicle use policy has already gone through. True, but three. This it, would be a fourth. Well, reading. Well, not if we yes. change it though. Well, well any if, any if policy minor changes, that's up, right? uh, where board members have had an opportunity to to view the changes before they're adopted. Mm -hmm. um, they're permitted, in fact, encouraged to make changes between the readings. Okay. Uh, this doesn't require. So we're, we we're going under the assumption that we've not adopted it. it? Right. Okay. Because the adoption wasn't finalized. Okay. Uh, memory serves. I could be wrong. Did I read somewhere where this was done in January? Yes. Okay. So we, myself, I'm new, and we've got two other new board members. So okay. three, four. Eight, four since January. Oh gosh. If, okay, four since January. So obviously, if the board's not comfortable, I think we need to ourselves review it. Uh, yeah, and and I'll I'll get it out to you in the next couple of days. 
Um, you should have ample time to review it before the November meeting. If you're still not comfortable with it at the November meeting, obviously we can yeah, push okay. it off to, right. to December. We might be ready in November. Right? Yeah, if, if we are ready... Right. If we are ready in November, then it's gone through the three readings and right. could be adopted. Okay. Just a technical point. I just mm -hmm. want to make sure sure. That we adhered to the regulation. Okay. Is there any other business? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn. Motion. motion, Paul. Second. Second. Mr. Stover. All those in favor, signify by standing up. <laughs> <laughs>